Hey, it's Kim here. Welcome back to the channel. Let's talk about more games that I played at PAX this year. This is video number two, so if you haven't watched the first one, how dare you? Don't forget that the links for the games will be in the description below, so please check them out. Best Friend Forever is a dating simulation game by Star Cult. I haven't played many dating sim games. I think it's actually just two, but this one has dogs, which I'm excited about. I should clarify, you date the humans, not the dogs. The humans have dogs and you have a dog and yay. I am very influenced by having animals in games, which is probably why I wanted to check this one out. The story is that you move to Rainbow Bay or maybe Rainbow Bay and adopt a dog to be your best friend forever and then you meet people and you like them and then you can date them. In the demo I adopted Cheeseball the Shiba Inu who is super cute but there are also other dogs that you can choose from in the full game if a Shiba Inu called Cheeseball is not your thing and I don't know how that's possible. Not having much experience in these kinds of games it seems very standard to me but there is an added addition an added addition <laughs> but there is an added function of kind of like a Tamagotchi with your dog. So they sit over to the side and they'll have like a little bloop above their head and you can choose whether or not to interact with them, which I think influences their behavior when you get to narrative portions of the game. When I was playing it, I was very confused and was like, do I, I click? Sure, it's, it did a thing, it walked, okay, great. Then at the end of a week in game, you get like a training schedule where you can impact your dog's obedience and tricks or whatever. And I think that again plays out in the story, which I kind of like that it ties together dog training and pet sitting and that sort of bond that you have with an animal with an actual storyline of how you would behave in life if you had an animal that you had to look after. I was left kind of with the dilemma of do I date the people for their dogs because someone had a Samoid? Is that... I don't know how you say that. Samoid. Sam... Sam... And I really like them so I was like do I date this person for their dog because I'm not particularly interested in them but then there was someone else who I really did like but they only had like an Italian Greyhound or something and they kind of look like bike seats so I was a bit... no 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 about who to date. The art style was really cute and it actually had voice acting in it as well for the radios and things like that which for me was unexpected. I think the only thing I didn't like about it and it could have been because it was the end of a long day at PAX, the text sound was very loud and was giving me a headache. But overall I think if you're someone who likes dating sims or dogs or both it could be the kind of game for you. It comes out February 14 which is Valentine's Day next year. Chaos Tavern is by Dragon Bear Studios and I guess if you're going to think it was like something you'd probably think it was like Overcooked, except not quite. It's not so mean. It is a local co-op game that follows the story of a group of adventurers who have signed on to run a magical tavern except they know nothing about how to run a magical tavern set inside a fantasy inspired Australia. Which is really cool because the devs have actually reached out to some local indigenous leaders to ask about representing figures from their religion inside the game. This game was not on my radar at all but I'm so happy my friend Bo got me to play it. He basically played it the day before and loved it so much when we all hooked up the next day. He was like like everyone come play this game and I'm glad he got me there because I sort of had written it off as something I wasn't interested in because I have overcooked at home and I didn't need another game that my husband's not going to play with me. <laughs> the game is all about multitasking which I like because I am good at multitasking. You've got a lot to do while you're running the tavern. You've got to serve meals, serve drinks, keep the kegs topped up, bank your money, fight off the elementals, scare away the cat burglar who's trying to steal your money. You've got to be making potions and taking customer orders because some people don't tell you straight away what they want you actually have to go and take their order like a proper restaurant. With all of that going on it does sound like the kind of game that gets hectic but I actually found it really balanced. I was playing with four people but the number of customers also scales depending on how many people are playing so you don't get overwhelmed because the devs want to avoid that panic level that a lot of people get with Overcooked. I think I'm the only person in the world who actually finds Overcooked really calming and I actually found Chaos Tavern to be even more calming than that. We all had plenty to do but nothing overwhelming and we worked 
surprisingly really seamlessly for people who had never played a game together before. Then at the end of each day of you running the tavern, the money is banked up and you are visited by the Wares Warp where you can spend your coins to upgrade the tavern to make it easy to serve customers or potentially serve more customers so that you can make more money. At this point is also when you get a bit more story. We played three days in the demo which was plenty of time to get a grasp of the game and I actually really enjoyed it. It's coming out sometime in the future on PC and hopefully console. Medieval is a remake by Other Ocean of the hack and slash action adventure puzzle game that I wasn't allowed to play as a kid because it was scary. It was an adult game. It had skeletons. <laughs> Playing Medieval at PAX was a bit of a weird experience because after waiting in line, they sort of push you in front of the screens, go, you have 15 minutes, I suggest you skip the cutscenes. And you're going, oh, okay, I guess I'll do that. It's just kind of the game go and because I was so conscious of the time limit I kind of really breezed through the tutorial so then I was a bit like mm, for the game I didn't quite know what was going on or what I was supposed to be doing and then I didn't get much of an experience of it. You'll probably know more about the game than I do. As far as I could tell I was a skeleton zombie who was brought back to life to kill the other zombies because one type of zombie is Bad. The graphics looked really good. I'm not sure if it was just me. I felt like the camera might have been a little janky, but I'm not sure. The movements were very ouch, kind of, duh, 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 but I guess that's because you're a skeleton. You don't have muscles. How does he move? Sorry, distracted. I don't think I actually play much in the way of hack and slash, but I didn't hate this. I think if I knew what I was doing, I'd probably enjoy it better. I like that there was sort of collecting, was it gems? Spirits? You're collecting something and it opens an area and that was kind of fun. Overall, the demo didn't put me off of playing the game. It's out now already on PlayStation 4. <laughs> Grabbermalls is a physics-based micro-puzzle game by Sad and Son. You play as these little 3D objects, they can be a bit random, that you have to connect in different ways to solve the puzzle which is given to you in the form of a one-word clue. We just happened to walk past this game in PAX Rising and we could kind of see what was happening. I was a bit like, what's this? This is weird. I like it. I think it's a really inviting game to play. It looks really fun and silly. It's got super bright colors and then it's got really clear controls, which means it's not difficult to learn. The difficulty comes in trying to get four people to work together when everyone's sort of spinning their little dude and trying to get them connect all at the same time. So that's a little chaotic, which is where the fun is. The demo had a few different puzzles to work through. We had things like shadow where you have to connect all your objects and then stand on a light and then it projects the correct shadow to match something that's displayed on the screen or there was nail where you had to create an object that could hammer the nail down and then gap which was a gap in the screen and you had to create something that could leap across the gap. We made something that when it jumped it caught and we were able to lift ourselves back up onto the other side but there are different ways that you can solve that puzzle. It was nice to play with a group even though we didn't know some of the people and it was good that we were all kind of polite. You don't need a full crew to play, you can play by yourself as well because you can swap from one block to another and some puzzles actually have more than four blocks so then you do have to swap back and forth and you can tell who you are because you're assigned a colour so when you swap blocks that block colours with your colour. I think it would make a really great party game because it's so fast and easy to learn. My only concern would be if you memorise the puzzles because even standing in line to play the demo we did actually blow through a lot of them because we'd seen how it was done and we could just recreate that. At the moment I think there's about 30 plus puzzles in the game and the devs are hoping for 60 plus so there is a lot of variety there and they currently aim to release it sometime in 2020 on PC and Switch. So there are some more of the games that I have played at PAX. I've got one more video to do after this one and that will be it I promise. I would love to hear if you played any of these games or what you think of them or any other games that you played at PAX this year. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I put up Let's Plays every Wednesday if you want to hang out some more hit subscribe and I will see you soon. Bye!